Hello, saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo's savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So, what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com slash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com, and on the top right, there's a button that says Email Kim. Fill that out, and that's it. Have you heard of something called a sludge video? Sludge video. I didn't know what it was. Maddie, who's one of our show producers here, she came to me the other day. She goes, do you know what a sludge video is? I'm like, I have no idea. She said, it is blowing up TikTok, okay? A sludge video looks like this. It's split screen videos that pair a couple of unrelated videos at once. So instead of just watching one video, you could be watching like four videos or just two videos. So like you'd be watching like some guy tell you how to fry an egg on the left hand side while the right hand side you're watching the Sopranos uh, at the same time. And apparently Gen Z is totally hooked on it. I don't know if I could do that. Could you do that? I'm not sure. Uh, Speaking of Gen Z, I was going to tell my Gen Z son, Ian, a joke about Social Security, but I didn't because he's probably not going to get it. Oh, you get that, right? Hey, listen, you're about ready to get more tech smarts because every single thing is now a tech thing. And if you're the first time joining us, a warm welcome. If you're a regular listener, welcome back. You look smashing, darling. I'm, of course, Kim Commando, America's digital goddess, here with you once again. It's the biggest show. It's the best show. It's the most trusted show about all things digital. And you can find my award-winning show in over 425 stations across the United States. And you can also find the Kim Commando show as a podcast on Apple and Spotify, And you can also support everything that we do by becoming a Commando Community member. It's exclusive. You get answers to your tech questions. We're going to start holding some online classes, and you can also get the podcast commercial free. And you can also get a 30-day free trial right now over at commando.com. And a special hello goes out to all of our listeners in the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marine Corps, the Coast Guard, and the Space Force in 175 different countries who are joining us on the American Forces Network Radio, serving more than 375,000 American service men and women. And from all of us here at the Kim Commando Show, a happy new year to everyone on the American Forces Network Radio. Our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open at one 825 5254 is the way to join us. All right, this past week was the big consumer electronics show in Las Vegas, right? We're talking about 130,000 people going to Las Vegas, 4,000 different exhibits. Oh, my gosh. And I don't know if it's still true, but it used to be that the week that CES was there is that gambling would take a dump. But you know what rose in revenues the week? Prostitution. Mm, Not sure if that's still the case. But let's talk about what CES was all about. Okay, TVs, always big. Imagine turning off your flat screen and it simply disappears. It goes transparent, no longer dominating the room. Uh, LG and Samsung have announced transparent TVs and LG actually demonstrated theirs live. It's a 77-inch truly transparent wireless OLED screen. I'm talking about no cables. No HDMI cables, nothing physically connecting this thing to the wall. They call it a zero connect wireless transmission box that hides nearby, beaming these visuals and sound to the screen. You can move the screen anywhere, just even in the middle of the room. The price, you ready for this? $88,000. Whoa. Okay. Pet Tech was also big at CES for se- For $799, the Oro Dog Companion Robot will play with your dog when you're not around. It's like a smart nanny, two-way audio so you can talk to your dog and the dog can bark back. Uh, There's a treat dispenser. It will also feed your dog. Let me think about this. If you really need this for your dog, you probably shouldn't own a dog. Now, what about the cat lovers? There's the Flappy. (laughs) Yes. This thing stops the cats from dragging in any dead mice or anything else that they want to bring inside the house. There's a motion sensor, a night vision camera, and the AI, they say, is smart enough to recognize over 90% of the time when your cat's trying to sneak in some unwanted gift for you. 
Flappy is going to cost $399. All right, moving along. Now, if you're one of those guys or gals that you just totally miss your BlackBerry phone, this one's for you. It's a tactical keyboard coming back. You can use it on your iPhone. It's the Clix keyboard from Clix Technology. It lets you strap on a keyboard on your phone. I know, I, I know people who would actually really, really dig this. My friend Scott, who is a lawyer, is still lamenting. I had dinner with him recently, still lamenting that he had to give up his BlackBerry. I'm going to have to buy this for him. $139. Uh, do you hate when your phone just can't fit in your pocket? Why not just get the super bendy phone that's called the Flex in and out Flip from Samsung? Folds over in two directions, including backwards, and it even works when it's bent. Not sure how long that one will last, but you can actually put that in your pocket. Uh, now there's also the Belkin Auto Tracking Stand Pro. I tried one of these long ago from some Chinese knockoff, and I think this one's actually going to make a lot more sense. It's going to probably work better, too. Here's how it works. You pop your phone on the stand, and you turn on camera mode, and then the stand tilts and keeps in your frame as you move around. Uh, that's for content creators, they say, for $180, or for people like me that... I like to talk and walk and do the laundry and clean the kitchen and all this other stuff. And so I'm going to have to try this again. Once again, it's called the Belkin Auto Tracking Stand Pro. Uh, Let's talk about fitness stuff. You can check your heart rate from your bra. Uh, Garmin has a solution for anybody who wears sports bras, they say. It's about 150 bucks. It snaps onto the bottom band of your bra. I don't really know who's going to buy this. Uh, Now we also have earbuds that can monitor your heart rate and your temperature when you exercise. Kind of like how you take your heart rate with the Apple Watch, but now it's happening inside your ear. Connects with all of your favorite health apps. It's expensive, $330. There's also the Lifespan Under Desk Bike. Okay, I don't have enough coordination to do this, but maybe you do. It lets you work out and power up your gadgets simultaneously. Pedaling at 60 RPMs generates 60 watt hours of electricity to charge your laptops and your phone. So this way you're getting exercise and you're charging everything else. Has a 15 watt wireless charger beneath the saddle for two devices at once, uh, $1,220. Okay. Uh, there's a Canadian startup by Glucskind. It rolled out an AI-based self-driving baby stroller. $2,400. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. For $2,400, you're going to strap your precious little infant into this self driving AI powered stroller. And as it goes along, it's going to rock your baby. It's going to play soft music. So, what would stop the baby from just rolling away? Well, it has a camera in front of the stroller to detect. If a person is in front of it, a dog, a car, whatever it may be. So if you don't want to actually push the stroller, you don't have to. You can just put your newborn in it and just walk alongside or behind it, knowing that AI is going to protect your little cherub from getting run over. Who would ever buy such a thing? I'm going to tell you this. When Tesla can go two years without someone dying in one of its self-driving cars, I might take a look at the smart baby carriage. Maybe. Maybe. Get cash for clothes at Plato's Closet in North Charleston and West Ashley. It's so easy. Recycle, earn cash, repeat. We pay cash on the spot for your trendy, gently used clothing, shoes, and accessories. At Plato's Closet, we buy all seasons, all day, every day. It's time to clean out your closet and cash in. Bring in your denim, graphic tees, athletic wear, shoes, handbags, and more. Sell your styles to Plato's Closet for cash. Then, do it again. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. When I read about this story, I just knew that you guys and gals would want to know more about it along with me. And let's go back first now to 2013. That's when Navy veteran 59-year-old Donnie Irwin, he left his house to pick up some cigarettes, and he's in rural Missouri. Here's the problem. He never came back. So for more than 10 years, no one really knew what happened to him. He just vanished. It was a cold case. His family, though, never stopped searching, but they didn't turn up anything, no luck at all. They could not find Donnie. So I want you to fast forward uh, to a gentleman by the name of James Hinkle. Now, he's a local drone pilot, a volunteer scuba search and recovery diver. 
And then James started searching for Donnie. And he documents all of this on his fabulous YouTube channel, by the way. It's called Echo Divers. And now for a full year, James spent all of his time off trying to find anything that he could about Donnie. And after 10 years using his drone, this is really amazing. James found Donnie's car in a pond not more than three miles away from Donnie's house. So uh, James is here to tell us all about what happened. So first of all, um, what sparked your interest in trying to find Donnie? Well, my interest actually sparked, not necessarily in this case, but a case that happened in uh, 1991. A girl by the name of Angela Hammond was actually abducted uh, from our from my hometown of Clinton, Missouri. Um, I was actually volunteered and was on the search team that was uh, that was conducted. Now, fast forward to uh, uh, you know almost ten years or well, several years later, um, I come across the story of of a veteran that had gone missing, uh, and I just started kind of following the case and looking into it. And before I knew it, I had Google Maps and Google Earth open, and I was looking for, wow, where, where did this guy go? Well, bring us back to the day when you actually found the vehicle. The day that I found the vehicle was December 14th. Um, I'd actually gone over to Camdenton, Missouri, and was driving Donnie's route that he possibly could have taken to the convenience store where he's going to go make a purchase. Uh, and what I was doing is I was taking my uh, Mavic 3 uh, Pro and flying it in areas that possibly a car could have gone off the road. The plan at that point was to actually fly over small bodies of water to see if we could actually see down inside the water and see if we could spot a vehicle. And whenever I actually came to the location where we found Donnie's vehicle, it was my second to the last stop. After that, I was heading home. Oh, wow. So, so you saw the car on your on the footage from the drone video on your phone mm -hmm. or on the controller. Did you mm -hmm. recognize it as a car immediately? Whenever I flew over the uh, the pond, um, I seen something that was a different color than what the bottom of the pond or the, the color of the water was, and it was lighter in color. Uh, so that was the first thing that really caught my eye. And then um, I flew in, dropped in, and got a little bit closer, and I could see it was obviously some sort of squared off object, uh, which is when we're looking for vehicles, that's one thing that we're looking for is we're looking for that unnatural shape in the water, which, you know, nature doesn't necessarily produce a lot of square angles. So uh, I seen that and uh, I was like, um, I think this might be a car. One thing that happened is as I was over the car, the, uh, the SD card that I had in the drone actually was full at that point. Oh. So I actually brought the drone back in, put a new card in and flew it back. But this time I actually walked down to the pond with following the drone down so that I could see if I could get my own eyes on this object in the water. Um, and standing off and standing next to the bank, I actually could not see the car. Wow. So if you were standing there and you didn't have eyes in the sky like I did, you would have never known or ever seen that car in that water. But um, I walked down there, I watched the drone get closer to the water and was able to get some shots. I could actually see what I thought was an antenna sticking up only inches above the water. Wow. Um, needless to say, I was a little shocked. Uh, that's probably an understatement, but uh, that's the best way I know to describe it. I was a little shocked that I was like, wow, this looks like what could be a car in the water. So once you actually identify and mark the car, then mm -hmm. is that when the state investigators got involved? Uh, well, at that point, um, Myself and the, the landowner had a very short conversation. Um, the equipment that I I carry on the uh, the uh, kayak, uh, the sonar actually gives me a reading, a temperature reading of the water, and the water uh, was in between forty to forty five degrees. And the scuba equipment that I have um, isn't the proper equipment or exposure suit to be in that cold of water. So at that point, I decided that uh, there was no need for me to put myself in danger. Beside, I knew the uh, the fire department, uh, Mid-County, had their own dive team, and they would probably be the ones that would come in and have to hook up and, and pull the car out. Uh, so at that point, we had a short conversation. I basically told uh, the landowners, like, hey, uh, these conditions aren't right. Plus, uh, my dive buddy uh, could not make it that day, so 
Uh, you never dive alone. That's, exactly. just, that's just one of the rules we follow for safety. Uh, plus, um, I didn't have the proper equipment to dive in that temperature of water. So uh, he went ahead and contacted uh, uh, law enforcement. And uh, uh, as soon as they heard car in the water, they immediately activated their dive team. Uh, so uh, it's like everybody kind of showed up almost all at the same time. <laughs> uh, so and th then at that point, I, I basically took a step back. Um, Hamden County Sheriff's uh, Department, they're, they're, they welcome me to stay and, and watch the rest of the operation from that point. So uh, at that point, I, I, watched, uh, I watched these experts and these heroes uh, crawl into some very cold, nasty water and uh, were able to go in and confirm that it was Donnie's vehicle. Wow. That, that's such an amazing story, really. Hey, thanks for being here telling your story, really. And it's an inspiration for everyone. Thank you, James. All right, let's switch gears. Let's talk about freebies because I know that you and I, we all love free stuff. And that's why there are Buy Nothing Project groups on Facebook and Nextdoor or the official app. They got a lot of things that you can get for free, like furniture, baby clothes, sewing machines, what I saw the other day. And then you can also make requests for things that you do want. Maybe some outdoor lights. I saw a basketball net. I saw a recliner. Now you can download the Buy Nothing Project app in the Apple or Google Play Store or just search Facebook by using Buy Nothing in the name of your town. You can also find similar posts in the Nextdoor app. Just be smart about this. Okay, usually you have to go to someone's house. Don't go by yourself. Bring a friend or meet in a public place or even at the police station. Since our founding in 2000, we at the Center for Internet Security have always had one mission. It's to create confidence in the connected world for people, businesses, and governments. As a nonprofit, we do this by drawing upon our core competencies of collaboration and innovation. The world is changing, cyber threats are evolving, and IT resources are limited. All you want is a way to strengthen your cybersecurity programs efficiently and effectively. Let CIS help you with these efforts. We use a consensus-based process involving IT professionals from around the world to develop and maintain security best practices. These resources are proven to defend systems and data against threats, both on premises and in the cloud. We also strive to help organizations of every size and maturity strengthen their cybersecurity programs. This includes serving U.S. state, local, tribal, and territorial government organizations. At CIS, we're all about making the connected world a safer place. Visit our website to learn more. Well, let's talk about artificial intelligence, okay? You know, there's so many things you can do with AI. Now, when my mother passed away, before she passed away, she said, Kim, you are now in charge of the family. And I was like, oh, no, I'm not. You're not doing that to me. And she said, no, you are now the family matriarch. So what that means is that whenever anybody has an issue in the family, they call me. So... Member of the family got some bad news about her hearing and she sent me the records from her hearing test because for some reason she can't hear out of her right ear. And so I was like, I don't know how to read hearing tests from the Mayo Clinic. I have no idea what it is. So I actually, I blocked out her name and all of her personal identifiable information. And I uploaded the test results to chat GPT and said, can you explain this to me in plain English? Okay. And it basically came back and said, she's in bad shape. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, can we do a supplement? Is there anything else that we can do? I mean, aside from prednisone shots and then not trusting that is that I um, have a friend who went to Harvard and uh, is, an, is a Rhodes Scholar in Georgetown, just super smart. And I said, I, I know this is not your specialty, but what do you think? And he basically said the same thing. And, you know, this is something that I want you to think about. I mean, AI, it's more than just, you know, can you answer a math problem or can you help me write something? There are things that you can do, especially now because it's the beginning of the year. We start, want to start making more money. It's always a big goal. and We want to do that with our businesses. And joining us is our amazing content queen, Ali Seligman. Hello there, Ali. Hi, Kim. So AI, you and I both use it quite a bit. We sure do. Um, chat GPT, yep. Bard, yep. Uh, and then there's a whole slew of other ones that have popped up. 
And have you noticed, uh, as, if, have you tried to like give the same question to different <laughs> AI bots to see who could give you the better? Because I've started doing that and, yeah. it's, and it's quite fascinating, isn't it? It really is. And the answers can be very, very different. And it almost seems like, okay, you're good at this. You're good at this. This one's good at this. And once you know that, okay, great. That's kind of a shortcut because you know, all right, if I need this kind of thing, I'm going to go to Bard. If I need this kind of thing, I'm going to go to ChatGPT. If I want this, I'm going to go to Perplexity, whatever it is. Yeah, I've noticed that ChatGPT over the last week hasn't been very smart. <laughs> Maybe it's having an off week. <laughs> I think it is. Or something's going on where they are putting in a lot of disclaimers Oh, interesting. Oh, maybe um, the lawyers are nervous. I think that's what's going on. <laughs> All right. So, but we're going to talk about business. We are indeed. Because we always have, we, everybody wants to make the, their life easier. They want to make more money. They want to be more productive. <laughs> you know, they, we want to work less. We want to take more walks. So, so, so how can AI help us accomplish all of this and make our thighs thinner oh, and give course. us more hair at the same time? Yes, yes. Well, I don't want to get into this and say, okay, you have to know all of this really technical stuff to make this work for you. And if you're listening and worried like, Kim, Allie, I don't even know how to get to these things. What do I do? Okay. First go to getkim.com, sign up for the current newsletter, and I'm going to send out direct links to all of these and a little here's how just to show you how easy that is. Cause it really is as easy as using Google, right? You just type stuff in. It is. Yeah. And, and a lot of people get freaked out because they're thinking like, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I don't have a programming degree. I don't know how no. it is. You know, it's kind of like we're moving from having a search site yep. like Google to having search answers, <laughs> really. Yeah, that's such a good way to say it. And if you know how to use Google, if you do stuff on your smartphone, you can use AI. I promise you. The first one on my list that you should do with your business is actually what Kim just said. Use it for things that you don't know. You don't know how to do or maybe that you aren't very good at. So, Kim, surprise, you didn't know how to read hearing tests? Okay. I didn't have any. And they were like, <laughs> let me tell you, Allie, they were charts with like <laughs> little boxes and triangles and lines and going like up and down and up and down. And, you know, and, and you know, I mean, I guess she thinks I'm like super smart and everything, but I'm like, I have no idea. What well, you're is. the matriarch. That's what happens. But exactly. I mean, isn't that amazing, right? It read those really complex things. And so think about all the stuff that it could do for you and your business. It can analyze data, which is really cool. You can say, all right, I have all these reports. I don't know what they mean. Okay, put them in. And Kim, really smart thing you did. You took out the confidential information. So if there's anything in there that you wouldn't want anyone else to see about your business, please take it out. But <laughs> it really is a good way to analyze things. But it can be anything, right? It can write your social media posts if you're bad at that. You can send a link to your Yelp page and say, hey, help me make this listing better. I'm a plumber and it's not very good or my website stinks, what can I write here? Um, it can give you ideas for marketing. It can do things like make graphs and charts and stuff that you just might not know how to do. So think about that. All these things, skills you wish you had, AI can do it for you. Well, you know, you talk about data analysts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things that Jeremy taught me, one of our IT geniuses, yep. is he always stresses to me and to you in the meetings, yeah. is that let the data speak. You know, because as a business owner and as a marketing expert, you're always like, my gut tells me to do this. And, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, and, and I know that this, I have a feeling, I have a feeling that this is going to be the best way to do it. But maybe your feeling's off. You yes, know? it happens, right? And we hope most of the time and we, you know, as we try different things, our gut feeling kind of changes and maybe we get in line with the data. But yeah, sometimes we're totally wrong and we wouldn't know if we didn't test things out and look at what actually works. Well, see, that's one of the things that I have challenged Jeremy with mm. is to use AI to analyze our newsletter data and to say, I mean, we, of course we can do A-B testing and that's old school. Oh yeah, that's, um, yeah. Okay, that's all, we, we're way past that. <laughs> I mean, we want to be able to look at the newsletters and look at the click-through rate the open rate, the unsubscribe rate. Now add the ratings, mm -hmm. the pluses and the minuses, and maybe analyze <laughs> the comments for that particular day. Yeah, clicks on specific links. Like look at all this stuff. This is like so much information. And for people to do that, oh my gosh, that is what a full-time job, right? To analyze this newsletter. I, I think it would take more, I think it would take it more than one person, right? Yes, you're right. And having AI do it, 
okay, maybe we can shortcut some of that and get a lot more information out of something that we otherwise wouldn't be able to. And then this way you could become a more effective, in our case, newsletter sender. Yeah, more effective creator. anything. Yeah. And, th- and, that's, and I, I really liked your idea of I'm a plumber and I'm not a programmer. I mean, I mean, you know, so and, and have it look at your Yelp page and your social media to say, here are, you know, what are ways that I could be doing things better and more effective? Yeah, for sure. Next up, of course, you mentioned efficiency. Yes, we all want more time to, I don't know, go get our steps or whatever. Tasks that take you forever. Maybe it's something that you're just particularly slow at. Maybe it's a task that just takes a long time. Well, AI can help you. You can, this is one I use all the time, you can turn notes into something that's legible for other people. So I can take my little, you know, quick typed up bullet points and say, please turn this into a nice email that I can send to someone. And it does it. And it's so nice. It's so nice. Well, and that's, you know, an email takes a lot of time. Oh my gosh. I mean, on my list, I have an email that I need to write to somebody to cancel a service. Oh my gosh, yeah. Kim, use AI. I, you know, and that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but it's on. But it was on my list today. And, and but it's like I'm not going to sit there and say, "Dear Bob, blah 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 blah." <laughs> you know, we entered into this venture with both of us having high expectations of its success, and you know, whatever it may be. And so I can just say, "Okay, this is the deal. I'm going to cancel it. Make the guy feel good about it." Exactly. You know? It's so cool. It's like. Okay, we're not quite to like mind reading tech yet, and I don't know if I ever actually want that, but it is this kind of, okay, say what you want the outcome to be, what you want to happen. You don't have to write everything out. You don't have to say it all. It'll infer a lot, and you'll at least end up with something that you can quickly edit that will be just as good as what you would have done in the first place, but so much faster. And better. And better. I mean, you know, because I've been using it with... um, I'm almost embarrassed. But I'm gonna say it anyway. <laughs> I've been using it with uh, with Kip, <laughs> okay. and so Kip Kip totally called me out on. It. He's like, "Which Chat GPT are you using to answer my emails?" I'm like, "Oh, Chip is our EVP, folks. In case oh. you don't know that." But so, yeah. So Kip caught me. You oh, know. Kip. Sorry, but because you know what, I you normally send short emails, but now all of a sudden it's like this, and then and then and then. then. Anyway, so moving yeah. on. No, I gotcha. And then, of course, the stuff that you just don't like. If there's something you really dislike about your job, about, you know, something you have to do for your business, and it sits on your list, and it gets under your skin, and you think, oh my gosh, I have to email Bob to cancel this service, and I would rather do anything than email Bob. Use AI. Really, maybe that for you, that's, you have an Etsy store, and you cannot stand writing the product descriptions. Cool. AI is really good at stuff like that. Maybe... You don't know how to reply to a really mean customer. (laughs) AI is good at that. Um, It can summarize documents, data entry stuff. Maybe you manage a store and, I don't know, making the schedule for employees. Ugh. AI can do that. Seriously. So all these things about your job that you're just like, oh, man, if only I didn't have to do X, I bet AI could help you with those. Okay, so Tracy came in to me. I don't know if I told you this. Tracy came in. She's one of our great sales folks here. Yeah. And she's like, oh, you know, here's the client. They changed the original contract. And, and I said, well, what changed? She's like, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, <gasps> like, I'm, like, I'm like, you don't know what changed? She's like, uh, I don't know. I'm like, oh, my gosh, Tracy. I mean, you know, this is like a seven-page contract, and, you know, advertising contract. Yeah. So I said, oh, I have an idea. Hmm. <laughs> so I put our contract. I put the client's contract. And then I said, tell me what's the difference. It told me what the difference was. And I said, and tell me what the ramifications of those, what is that? Oh and my the, gosh. So it did the whole thing. And Amazing. Said, I know. And I said, said, well, then at the end, gave me a disclaimer. You should consult your own legal. <laughs> I'm like, I don't need to consult my lawyer at this point. You know? <laughs> no, it is really good. AI in general is really good at things that are analysis, logic. Yeah, probably don't ask it. Ugh, I don't know. The, the best way to respond to your friend who just lost their pet. No, you don't want to do that. Mm-mm. That you need a human touch. But something like that, looking at a contract, oh, for sure. AI every day. So I really liked how you break this down. So three categories. Tasks you don't know how to do. You're not good at. That's number one. Number two, things that take a lot of your time. 
And finally, stuff you just don't want to do. Yeah. Okay. So, so as we move forward into 2024, I want you guys and gals to keep this in mind. Allie, of course, will always keep us up to date in the newsletters. If you're not already getting the newsletters, make sure that you sign up over at getkim.com. Allie, great job as always. Thank you, Kim. I know we just helped a whole bunch of people. They're like, oh, now I feel smart like Allie and Kim. <laughs> All right, let's see. Larry in Tyler, Texas. Hello there, Larry. I've got a property management company, and right now I have been using a Microsoft uh, program. And to update it every year, and it keeps all the information in the system, Mm -hmm. and so it's easy to do. Well, my Microsoft computer is dying I am a Mac user, and I am trying to find a software program that I can use on my Mac that I don't have to reload all my owner's information. I've got about 400 owners. I send out about a little over 200 1099s annually okay. out to my owners. And okay. I was trying to find out a recommendation. Um, all right. Or do you have all these names in, like, QuickBooks by chance? Yes. Okay. Um, basically, what, what you're going to do is instead of using your old Windows computer, which you're like, I never want to get on there again. <laughs> okay. All right. And this program that you have to update all the time uh, is I would take a look at using an online service for this that will allow you to, uh, to create, verify, file, and send out these 1099 forms uh, and it also integrates with something like QuickBooks or maybe another accounting package. Now they do charge, uh, but by the time that you buy a new computer and you get the software and you still have to deal with all, everything else that goes along the way. Cause now with your windows computer, you need antivirus security software. You know what I'm talking about? It just becomes exactly, it goes down a big black hole at that point. And then I just see Larry, your little head arms coming up going, help me get out of this. Help me, help me. Uh, is there's a, a company called tax 1099. Uh, and they charge per form. I think it's like, I don't know, 40 cents a form. So you can send that out. And, you know, you can always charge this to the property owners and charge them, you know, $10 for the form, you know, under something else, you know, administration fee or whatever it may be. So you get that money back. Uh, So it's tax 1099. Another one's called e-file for biz. That's e-file, the number four, and then biz, B-I-Z. This e-file for biz, they do not only 1099s, but W-2s and ACA forms online as well. So the whole idea is that you're going to set up an account, you're going to import everybody from your QuickBooks account, and then you're going to be able to issue your 1099s just with a couple of press of the keys. You're not sitting there trying to figure all this out. It's just going to be done for you automatically. Uh, and again, it's compliant with IRS rules and their IRS authorized e-filing services. And that would be the best case scenario. So again, the site is tax 1099, again, tax 1099 and e-file for biz. Oh, I hate paying taxes. Don't you? Oh, every time I look at it, I'm like, Ooh, is this really necessary? Yeah, it is. Cause we don't want to go to the pokey. Okay, so let's say you're a dog lover. How would you like to make $3,000 a month by renting out your backyard, right? Oh my gosh, three grand a month. This is a side hustle. It's a win for dog lovers everywhere. What you do is you're going to rent your backyard as a dog park using the app called Sniff Spot. Sounds a little kooky. I mean, why would someone want to rent your backyard? Maybe they're traveling. They need a place for Fido to unwind. Or maybe there's just not a ton of space at their apartment. So to get started, head over to SniffSpot.com. You're going to see backyards organized by state and city. I know. What a time that we live in. I found a backyard near me. It had photos and it had a hammock for dog parents and had 349 reviews saying we love the large grassy area and great house. SniffSpot says you can earn up to $3,000 a month by renting out your backyard. All right, do me a solid. Tell one person about the Kim Commando Show, and you can always find me at commando.com. This program is a copyrighted production of Westar Multimedia Entertainment and protected by the copyright laws. Any rebroadcast or use of this program for commercial, business, economic, or financial purposes without the written permission of Westar Multimedia Entertainment is strictly prohibited. 
Hello, saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo's savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So, what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com slash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. Get cash for clothes at Plato's Closet in North Charleston in West Ashley. It's so easy. Recycle, earn cash, repeat. We pay cash on the spot for your trendy, gently used clothing, shoes, and accessories. At Plato's Closet, we buy all seasons, all day, every day. It's time to clean out your closet and cash in. Bring in your denim, graphic tees, athletic wear, shoes, handbags, and more. Sell your styles to Plato's Closet for cash. Then, do it again. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue.